So, hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life. In the last episode we managed to get our update logic up and running and um, I'm now thinking about whether to write another test or not. One argument against another test is that uh, actually this test is covering quite a few cases of counting neighbors. There is a cell, a dead cell with fewer than three neighbors which stays dead. There is actually a live cell that dies. There is a cell that comes becomes alive because it has exactly three live neighbors. There's another cell that dies because it only has one neighbor. There's cells that stay alive because they have sufficiently many neighbors. The only case that is missing actually here is a cell that dies because it has too many neighbors. So I think to cover the situation where there's actually uh, neighbors all around and to check whether whether all the neighbors are actually found, uh, I'm going to add uh, I'm going to add another test that's actually going to check if it considers all the surrounding. Uh, cells when when updating all surrounding or surrounding cells are actually neighbors aren't they so I'm going to write a test it's going to look quite similar to this one and it's going to have just only alive cells and in the end, I'm going to expect that this is the outcome because the cell in the middle is the only one that has way too many neighbors to survive, so it will die. This cell has actually three neighbors. This cell... Oh, wait, this is even not true. The first cell has three neighbors, so it stays alive. The second cell already has five neighbors, so I expect it to die, actually. This one, again, has uh, three neighbors. This one has five neighbors, so it's going to die as well. Um, and the same is true for this one and for this one. So this is actually my expectation. Let's see whether that runs. Yes, so my expectation actually matches uh, what my method calculates. So I guess now there are sufficiently many branches of the counting logic covered. Um, let's turn to something else. The tests look quite reasonable to me. There's some kind of redundancy in this uh, in this thing here. So I'm kind of tempted to factor this out and say, okay, I have a, mel I have a, a helper method that actually says, okay, uh, this is the right shortcut. That's actually... Uh, called get next state which does exactly the, the same things uh, let's inline this one uh, do the update, update to the state I usually tend to move such helper methods down here and one nice thing Eclipse actually managed for me is to use this uh, get next function already at every position I had this same two calls this doesn't work always, but many a time it works. My tests are run, so everything's green here. And I'm actually quite uh, satisfied with how my test looks. What I don't like currently is how the universe implementation looks. Mm, this is partly because of these many nested loops. I cannot really get around, uh, at least not with Java 7, I think I'm currently using, because... Uh, there is no possibility to uh, abstract from these different changes I do in the looping here. So it's three. You see, it's three times the, the same two loops nested. But every time I do something different, and I even do something intermediate uh, in two of the three cases. So I don't see really a possibility to figure that, to factor that out. If you have an idea how to do this, how to uh, approach this problem feel free to leave me a comment and uh, I'm going to do an episode on how to refactor such things 
even without lambda expressions and stuff. But I can actually do something about this monster of a method down here because uh, there's really much redundancy in the in this single method and I want this to change. The nice thing uh, for this refactoring is that I have a running test suit I can re-execute to see whether my changes uh, actually broke something. Oh, what I did uh, just now, by more or less by accident, because it's kind of a reflex, I pressed uh, the formatting button, so it kind of changed uh, changed the, the the line breaks for me. But that's not that that's not that much of a problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to factor out this part because. I have the exact same part used down here. So I'm going to use the extract method refactoring and I say, I'm going to say uh, get number of alive neighbors in row. Currently, uh, I'm going to have too many attributes. I'm going to have to change something because it's going to pass in the, the original value, add it, add some to it in return, which is actually completely unnecessary. Um, what I can do instead is kill this one here and actually here, give it an int number of neighbors, thanks auto-completion, and initialize it to zero and return it. This is actually everything I need. Mm. Actually, I don't like this notation, so I'm going to add some braces here, but this is really, uh, this is kind of a religious thing, so I'm just going to do it because I like it better. I don't see there's any real advantage or disadvantage. Um, Okay, what Eclipse also did for me again is it factored out the second occurrence of this logic. The only thing I have to change now in order to make this run is to add a plus. And now, hey, I execute my test and this st these still run. This is nice. So the first refactoring worked. I removed the duplication of this code. But I still don't like that I have to pass the row and the row above in because it somehow has to know more about the state than I would like to or about the, the basic implementation. And the question for me is why do I need the row anyways? I need the row to count the length at that point, which is actually even wrong, isn't it? I should use the, the row above here instead. So and now row is not used a single time, is that right? Because I mean I'm I'm checking I'm accessing the row above after what so I should check the length of the row above because it could actually be different. Um so now I can remove this one and save, execute the tests, and it's still everything running. That is nice. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the signature because I don't like the order of the parameters. I'm going to move the row again before the column and I'm actually going to rename this parameter to row because this method doesn't need to know anything about this internal logic. And maybe if I'm lucky, this now even fits into one line. Nice. So we refactored this part out and let me think about. Now I have kind of a repeated pattern still occurring here because this is this part, this whole if reoccurs here and this if reoccurs down here. The only thing I don't have is this intermediate one. So I currently see two possibilities to do that. One possibility is actually to uh, reuse this whole method here and subtract this middle case again. 
but I think this is really complicated to understand. Another approach is, of course, to factor out this one and the, and the respective case below here into a separate method and reuse them here. And this is actually, I think, how I'm going to approach this. So I'm going to factor out um, get Uh, get a life neighbor count of um, left cell. I don't really like the name yet, but let's see how we can how we can approach this. Again, we have the same thing. No. Let me just check. I mean, it's automatic refactoring, but it should still work in any case. So, okay, we have the plus case here. This is plus one. I don't want to have this one. This is actually exact. This exactly the same thing I'm going to do here. Initialize this with with zero. Is this still working? Yes, it is still working. And I think I'm going to change some, something else here because I want this to be uh, to be the call minus one, so the one I'm going to check here. So I'm going to check whether this is actually greater or equal zero, and I'm going to remove this part here because then I think I can reuse this method even more often. Or in an, at least in a nicer way. Does this work? Yes, it's still working. So now what I want to do is I want to reuse this except exact method at this point. Even with the same with the same attributes, and this should still work. Yes, it does. And the last thing I'm going to do is repeat the exact same refactoring for this method. And I'm going to actually going to change the name here because I think I have a better better idea, which is get count if cell is alive. Again, repeating the test, still working, removing this parameter which is actually unnecessary instead writing a plus equals here and then I'm actually going to change something else which is return 1 here and return 0 down here because everything else is just unnecessary I mean I don't know don't need to add just one because it's going to return 0 1 anyways get count if cell is alive and I'm going to rename this method also to get get count if cell is alive <laughs> which does not work uh, obviously it does not work because I have now two methods with the same name um, but what I can do is I can reuse this second method to get make this easier, which is actually cell plus one. So I don't think I really did myself a favor in changing this, and actually I broke something with this refactoring. Uh, of course I broke something because I cannot pass in the plus one here. Yeah, so I fix it again. But I'm actually not sure if I, made, if I did myself a favor in uh, making this change, pulling this change out of here, because I cannot really reuse the logic in that case. Let me just think about it. Can I? Can't I? I can actually, I think I can actually merge these two methods into one. I can merge it by using this condition also here. 
checking both, saying this way and this way, then I can actually remove this one because I mean they're essentially doing the same thing except for this one condition. So now I can use these two here and I should do the add one calls here. Is this still working? No, it is not. Now I have index out of bounds exception, but this episode is over, I think. I'm going to fix this mess I just created in the next episode, probably by reverting much of the state of the changes I just did and doing them one by one, because I just did what you're not supposed to do in refactoring. I did too many things at a time. Yeah, let's clean this up next time. See you around.